Hey everyone, it's Josh here. And in today's software tutorial, I'm gonna be giving you a complete comprehensive overview of the Pinterest Business Ads Manager platform. If you've ever been curious about how to start running ads on Pinterest, but haven't known where to start, this video is gonna show you how to create effective and engaging ad campaigns on Pinterest, as well as give you a more comfortable idea on how to use the Pinterest business platform. So without further ado, let's jump right into it, creating our first set of campaigns, ads, and understanding everything there is to know about Pinterest business. So immediately after creating our account here, we can see describe your business. So in this case, we can select the best description of our business. In our case, we'll say content creator next and talk about the business. So fill out our information here, um, enter our country and region and put in a website. In our case, we'll put, I don't have a website right now. Next, it'll ask us what are the three business goals we have. Now, when it's asking us here what our business goals are, what it's really trying to figure out is what are the types of campaigns that we're gonna to need to be running. Now, what I mean by that is if you've never run any campaigns online before, you may not be familiar with campaign objectives. Campaign objectives are radically different depending on what the desired outcome of your ad campaign is. For example, if you wanna get as many ads out as possible because you're a new business and nobody's heard of you before and all you care about is just getting your name out there, well, then that objective is gonna be very, very strongly tailored to the awareness section and Pinterest will adjust accordingly to match that brand objective. Alternatively, if you're a brand who wants to advertise on Pinterest, but your goal is to actually get conversions and purchases on your website, well, that's gonna be radically different in the way that Pinterest is gonna show your ads than the one I just described. So in our case here, let's say we wanna increase online sales and we wanna drive more traffic to our site and we'll say we're gonna generate more leads. The next thing it's gonna ask us is, what is the focus of our brand? Now, if we hover over the eye icon here, we can see that it's just so that Pinterest gives us a more personalized experience. So if we hit the drop down, let's just say for the moment we are, um, yeah, let's say DIY and craft. We'll hit done here. And now it'll ask us, where would we like to start? Would we like to share ideas, creating pins to tell our brand story using images, videos, products, and links? And that's just basically filling out our brand on Pinterest. Do we wanna grow our audience by creating an ad to reach more people and using tools to track the performance of those ads? Or do we wanna showcase our brand, helping people on Pinterest get to know our brand by adding our picture, location, and helpful info? Now, the first one and the last one are obviously just gonna be using Pinterest as a brand organically. But what we wanna dive into today is really the meat and bones of it, which is growing our audience by actually using the ads manager platform portion of the website. So in our case, we're gonna hit grow your audience here and we're gonna hit next. And now we can see it's gonna jump right into actually creating our first ad. As we can see here, we've got a four step plan to actually go about creating our ads on Pinterest. We've got things like creating collages and just a little bit of information that'll help us get through this. Now, as you're following along with this video, as I highly encourage you to be doing, I also highly encourage you to actually go at this point to take the tour because there may be some basic things that we're not covering this video that Pinterest actually does here. So we're just gonna simply hit X in this case. Now, unlike other ad platforms, Pinterest is very different in the way that you actually go about setting up ads. Whereas with other platforms, we would start with our campaign. Right now, we're starting right with the ad. What is actually gonna be in the ad? Well, for our title, we'll say Josh's ad. Simply put it as that. We've got our brand that we're actually publishing it under and tell everyone what this pin is about. This pin is about my ad. We can also add alt text here so that if somebody isn't able to view the image, we can simply add alt text and this will be read aloud by screen readers. And we can actually add our destination link. And then all we have to do is drag and drop or click to upload images or a video. Now, they recommend using high quality JPEG files under 20 megabytes, or if you're doing a video, have an MP4 file under two gigabytes. Now, when it comes to the content specifications for actually creating your first Pinterest ad, now they recommend creating a high quality JPEG under 20 megabytes, and if you're uploading video, a high quality MP4 under two gigabytes. So in my case, I've selected a picture of a burger here, and it says that we recommend an image that's at least 1,000 pixels by 1,500. This pixel is 900 by 1125. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it, but just know that making sure that your ad is actually conforming to Pinterest and making it easier for interest to put out means adhering to the type of specifications that they actually have for uploading content and creating those pins. But in our case, I'm just gonna leave it for the moment, and we can see things like edit pin, and you know, can set the aspect ratio two to three, three to four, one to one. However you want your pin to be seen on Pinterest, we can adjust by cropping it, rotating it, changing it, deleting it. And we can see Josh's ad. This is a pin about my ad. It's 
a picture of a burger. Now that we've got the basic ad set up here, let me put in the destination link. Now we recommend a destination link because obviously when somebody clicks on your pin, what are they gonna see? What are you gonna be redirecting them to? So in my case, let me put in the link to my favorite burger restaurant. Now all we have to do is add our destination link and I'm just gonna simply put in a burger restaurant that's nearby and we'll hit the publish button. And when we hit the publish button, it'll immediately ask us to create a board, which we need to do before we can publish this ad. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Pinterest, you might not understand what a board is, but as you continue to use the platform and create ads for it and actually understand how Pinterest works, you'll know that it's very different from traditional social media platforms in the way that it shows content. So let's create a board. We'll create a board and we'll say Josh's burger ads. So in my case, I'm going to create a board that says Josh's burger ads and we'll say keep this board secret just for now and we'll hit create here and now we're just going to wait a moment and we're going to see, yes, Josh's burger ads has been created and we're going to publish it to Josh's burger ads. Now, once it's published, we're going to see another pop-up that says save your favorite ideas with just one click and in our case, we're going to say maybe later and we're going to go back to where would you like to start because we're right back here. We've got our ad created already. It's that simple. But now that we've got that ad created, let me show you everything else that Pinterest has to offer, including actually getting our ad running on Pinterest. All we have to do is go to the top left hand corner of the screen and we can see all of our shortcuts, including creating, analytics, ads, business, etc. Now under shortcuts, we have our business hub and home feed, and we actually have the ability to create organic pins, not paid. But we also have the ability to create pin for ad or create pin for idea ad. Now we have our analytics here, things like audience insights, conversion insights, our actual ads, our account overview, creating a campaign, promoting a pin, bulk editor, reporting, etc. The next thing we're going to do here is create our first campaign and add that ad to it. No pun intended. So after I hit that button that says create a campaign, it'll take us to this saying, welcome to the Pinterest ads manager. And we'll use the location to determine what they're using, Canadian dollars. In my case, it's Canadian dollars. In your case, it might be US dollars. We'll hit next here. And this is gonna be actually creating our first campaign. We have to review and agree with the advertising campaign agreement. And yes, we're gonna hit accept. And now we can see everything about our account here. Now on our campaign overview here, there's gonna be a couple terms you'll see. Things like spend, impressions, paid pin clicks, CPM, and CPC. Now, if you're not familiar with all of these, I will quickly fill you in. Spend is basically how much you're spending on your ads or how much you have spent on your ads already. Impressions is the amount of people who have actually seen your ad but haven't clicked on it or haven't held on it long enough to actually be considered a view per se. Next, we have our paid pin clicks, which is how many people have actually clicked on the pin that we're paying to promote. The next one here is CPM, which stands for cost per mill, which basically means how much are you spending to get your ad in front of a thousand people. And the final one here, CPC. How much are you paying to get somebody to click on your ad? Say for example, your ad gets seen by a thousand people. How much are you paying for every one person who clicks on it. If there's one person who actually clicks on your paid pin out of say a thousand impressions, well, obviously you aren't gonna have the best CPC because it's gonna cost a lot to get somebody to actually click on your pin. Unlike the alternative where let's say 500 people actually click on your paid pin out of a thousand impressions. Well, obviously in that case, you're gonna have a much better CPC because it's not costing as much for you to actually get people to click on your pin. Personally, I think it's one of the most convincing arguments for actually making well done converting ads because it doesn't matter how much money you simply throw at an ad campaign, the ad spend is not indicative at all of what you're actually gonna be converting. The more important thing is what your CPC is. Rather, aiming to have as low of a CPC as possible is gonna be much more indicative of the results of your ad campaign. Because if you're only having to spend, let's say 30 cents for every person who clicks on your ad, and on average, every third person is actually making a conversion, whether that is just going through to your website or actually making a purchase, well, then your return on your ad spend is gonna be much, much greater than if you're having to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars for even just a couple dozen clicks. Now at the top here, we can see all of our conversion settings, things like the last seven days, and we can adjust that, but we're gonna jump right into the most important part, which is actually creating our campaign. And in the bottom left-hand corner here, all we have to do is hit create campaign, and boom, we're right into creating it. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to creating a campaign, we're designing our ideal campaign objective. We have things like brand awareness, simply helping other people discover that our product or service or even business exists. Things like video views. We just wanna get video views. We want people to see it. Well, that's another objective you could have. Or in our case, we wanna actually get conversions. We wanna drive people to our website to actually make reservations or purchases on the site. So in our case, we would hit conversions drive people to take actions on your website. Now, when I click on the conversion objective, I just got a big pop-up in my face that says, please set up conversion data. Now, what does that mean? Well, off the bat, 
Pinterest doesn't have any way to track what people are doing on your website. I mean, Pinterest doesn't run your website and have all the analytics from your website, you do. So to actually track how many people are actually making purchases on your website and to relay that information back to Pinterest so Pinterest knows how many people are actually converting, you need to set this up between your website and Pinterest. So in our case, we're simply not gonna do that for now and we're simply just gonna say brand awareness. But again, depending on your specific objective of your specific advertisement campaign, you will select a different option at each stage here. Now, we're gonna scroll down and set our campaign name and status, and we'll simply just leave it as the default for now. And we have campaign status active. We can scroll down here and set our budget and schedule over the lifetime or daily. Now, when it comes to setting your specific campaign budget and schedule, actually selecting lifetime is probably gonna give you the best performance overall. Yes, if you set daily spend at $30 per day, for example, sure, you would have a consistent daily spend but Pinterest algorithms know which days are gonna give you the best converting results. Let's say more of your audience is active on Saturdays. Well, if you're gonna be spending $30 a day, well, then you're not gonna be capitalizing when most of your audience is actually gonna be on the platform. Alternatively, if we select lifetime here and we simply say a $1,000 lifetime budget, Pinterest is gonna allocate and distribute your spend accordingly to actually achieve you the best results. After we've set our ad spend, we can go and set our specific days that we're gonna be running. So it's the 27th of March today. And so we'll give it a couple weeks and we'll set it to there and we can hit continue. Next, we have our ad group details. This basically saves us time when it comes to setting up new ads in the future because it's gonna group our ads under a specific bidding strategy or audience. Now, in our specific case, for our targeting strategy, we can reconnect with users who have already interacted with our brand, find new customers who haven't interacted with our brand, or actually choose our own custom targeting selections. Now, in my case, I'm gonna say simply find new customers because if I haven't started this before, well, obviously I'm not gonna to have to reconnect with any users because nobody will have interacted with my brand. So I'm gonna select find new customers here. Now that we've got our targeting strategy set up, we're gonna actually go and create our very first audience. Let's say for a moment that we're a restaurant that specializes in burgers and we wanna get more people into our restaurant. Well, all we have to do is scroll down here to the interesting keywords tab. And if we click down on this, now we're gonna see a couple things here. First of all, always keep enable interest and keywords checked. That's pretty self-explanatory. But for the second one here, enable expanded targeting. This basically makes it so that Pinterest is actually gonna show our ads to more people that are interested in our brand, but don't just fall under what we actually set. Say for example, I set a very, very tiny market for a very, very niche group of people. Well, Pinterest obviously doesn't wanna to show to exactly who we've selected, but by clicking this and having enable expanded targeting on, it's gonna show it to more of the right people who we wanna target. And if you're a beginner, I highly encourage you to keep this enabled. So let's go and add some stuff related to burgers and we'll say, we'll say restaurants, we'll say travel restaurant, and we'll say burger, food and drinks, sandwich, meat, beef recipes, cheeseburger, etc. And we've got that on there. And now we can scroll down and say demographics. Who do we actually want to target? We want to target people of all ages or specific ages. Now by default for locations, it's set to Canada. But in this case, if I want to have specific countries, let's say not just Canada, I want to have United Kingdom and the US and Canada and we'll, we'll just, we'll pick a bunch of countries in North America here who we actually want to target. Assuming for the moment that we're all across the continent. And we're gonna scroll down here and select languages and devices. Obviously, if you are gonna be running a restaurant ad, it doesn't really matter what device somebody's using. But let's say, for example, that you're running an ad for your new app that only runs on Apple iOS. Well, obviously, if you're gonna be making Pinterest ads, you don't wanna show it to people who are using an Android. That just wouldn't make any sense. But in our case, we don't have to worry about that. So we're just gonna leave all devices selected. And placement and tracking, again, this is for advanced users and specifically relates to the actual conversions. Basically, it means that your website is gonna convert and relay that information back to Pinterest so Pinterest actually knows how well your ad campaigns are running. But we're not gonna worry about that for now. We're gonna scroll down to budget and schedule. And again, we've got our lifetime budget set up for the campaign and the campaign duration. And for optimization and delivery, we have things like ad group frequency target. And for this one, optional weekly, monthly. Again, if you're just a beginner at this, I highly encourage you just leaving both of these as optional. And for bidding, just have it set as automatic. This is only for people who actually know how the bidding works with Pinterest and other ad campaigns behind the scenes who are actually gonna select custom. But in your case, we're not gonna have to worry about that. So we're just gonna leave automatic, recommended, selected. Now, when it comes to the ad section down here, we have a couple different options. Of course, we could go and select pins from our boards or paid partnership. Or if we actually wanna go and create the ad right here, such as we're gonna do, we hit create ad. And again, we go through the whole process here of putting in our pin title, description, alt text, adding our images, you know, selecting our board, 
and making it so that we have all the details available to actually go and create our pin. So in my case, I've quickly gone and recreated that ad from earlier, but with some actual copywriting. The Burger Hut, Tastiest Burgers in LA, and theburgerhut.com, which I don't think is actually a real website. Maybe it is. I mean, it sounds like a catchy name. So in our case, we're gonna actually go and hit publish here, and we've got that ad created and added onto this. And for our ad, we can create all the information right here. We've got things like the standard ad. It's an ad that features a single image. We also have quiz ad, showcase ad. In our case, we're not gonna worry about that. And then we have things like the ad name, the destination URL, our ad tracking URLs if we're doing conversions. And we can see on the right-hand side here how it looks in grid view, how it looks in close-up view. Now, the question you need to be asking yourself here is, is this an ad that is going to convert or is this the ad that I want to actually have people view? And most importantly, is this something that I would click on? Now, although you may not be the target audience for this ad, it always helps to go and put yourself in your customer's shoes and just look and say, wow, would I click on this? Now, if I'm looking at this in grid view, if I see a tasty burger like this, maybe I'm more likely to click on it. But we can actually go and remove it with that garbage can icon right here. But if we scroll back up to the top here, in the top right-hand corner, we can see potential audience size. And this is Pinterest telling us what the potential audience size for our pin is. Now, when it comes to determining your audience on an ad platform, typically I tell people to not go too narrow so that nobody sees your ad, but not keep it too broad. Because as we all know, if you're trying to target everybody, you're really targeting nobody. But Pinterest is different. And in this case, I deviate from the typical method of telling people don't make your audience too broad because unlike other platforms where you have one singular post in your feed and then you scroll to the next one, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of these have one singular post in your feed until you scroll to the next one. But for Pinterest, you're seeing dozens or hundreds of pins every couple of minutes across hundreds of boards. So you may see so many posts across the entirety of Pinterest in a given day. And because we've enabled expanded targeting, it's actually made it so that we have a potential of 117 plus million people who are actually gonna be in the potential audience size. The final thing we would have to do now that we've got everything set up is actually go and hit publish. And once we hit the publish button, it's gonna ask us for a couple things. The first one, as usual, is a payment method, actually making it so that we can pay for our ads. And the next thing, of course, is your business information, such as your address and your name, so that Pinterest actually knows who they're billing for the ads. And just a reminder, if you wanna view all the information in a highly detailed way about your ads and your campaigns, all you have to do is go to the top left-hand corner of the screen and go to the Insights tab and go to Reporting. And by clicking into it, you can view everything about all of your ads, your spend across all of your campaigns. It's a really easy way to visualize all the information about your ads in the most important way possible concise and easy to digest. Pinterest analytics are also very good at delivering us an overview of all of our Pinterest ads, things like the performance over time, what our top pins are, what our top boards are, etc. And it gives it a really clear and concise way to visualize all the most important information about all of your ads across all of your campaigns. And just like that, it's that simple. If you followed along with us step by step here, you would have followed along and created your very first ad campaign on Pinterest and your very first set of paid pins. Now, all you have to do is hook up your business information and a payment method, and you can start publishing your paid pins immediately. And with analytics tools that will track the relevant data, I wish you the best of luck in creating your very first paid pin and Pinterest advertisement campaigns. As always, my name is Josh Mountain, and I hope to see you in the next one.